Lesson 1, Logging Off Time Hey Anna, have you noticed how we tend to get so absorbed in our digital devices these days? I think it's a good idea to log off at a specific time each day. You're absolutely right, John. It's easy to lose track of time when we're constantly connected. Setting a designated log off time could be a great strategy to help us maintain a healthy work life balance. Definitely. I was thinking of logging off around 7 p.m. every evening. That way, I can have some quality time with my family and do other activities I enjoy without the constant distractions. That's a wonderful idea. I'll try to do the same. Maybe we can even make it a challenge and see who can stick to their log off time better. Ah, uh, I like that. We can keep each other accountable. It'll be fun to see who's the better digital time manager. Absolutely. And you know what? I bet we'll both feel a lot more refreshed and productive if we stick to our log off times. Exactly. It's all about finding that balance and being intentional with our time. I'm excited to give this a try. How about we check in with each other next week and see how it's going? Sounds like a plan. I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be great for our productivity and our well-being. Awesome. Let's do it. I'm glad we had this conversation. It's a simple change that can make a big difference. Me too, John. Thanks for bringing it up. I think this is going to be a game changer for both of us. Absolutely. All right, let's make it happen. Talk to you soon. Lesson 2, Shopping Spree Hey Anna, have you been shopping lately? I've been on the hunt for the perfect new outfit. Ooh, yes I have. I just went to the mall this weekend and found some amazing pieces. What kind of look are you going for? Well, I'm hoping to find something a bit more stylish, but also comfortable, you know? I want to look put together but not too formal. I hear you. Have you checked out the new boutique downtown? They've got a great selection of casual chic clothes that would be perfect. No, I haven't been there yet. Is it reasonably priced? I'm trying not to blow my budget this time. It is. The prices are really reasonable, and they have some great sales and discounts going on right now. You should definitely check it out. Awesome, I'll have to make a trip down there soon then. I'm so tired of just wearing the same old things in my closet. I totally understand. A little shopping therapy can do wonders for the soul. Plus, it's always fun to refresh your wardrobe with some new styles. Absolutely. I'm excited to see what I can find. Maybe we can even go together sometime and you can help me pick out some outfits. Yes, let's do it. I'd be happy to lend my fashion expertise. We can make a day of it shopping, maybe grab some lunch too. Sounds like a plan. I'll let you know when I'm free to hit the stores. This is going to be great. Can't wait. I love a good shopping trip with a friend.
It's going to be so much fun. Me too. All right, I'm off to check out that boutique. Catch you later. Lesson 3, Vacation Planning Hey Anna, I've been considering a tropical beach destination for my next vacation. Do you have any recommendations? Ooh, a tropical beach getaway sounds amazing. I just got back from an incredible trip to the Bahamas. The beaches there are simply breathtaking. The Bahamas, huh? That's an interesting option. What did you enjoy most about your trip there? Well, the crystal clear turquoise waters were definitely the highlight for me. And the island vibes were so relaxing, the perfect escape from the daily grind. That does sound lovely. I've always wanted to visit the Bahamas, but I'm a little worried it might be too crowded or touristy. I can understand that concern, but I actually found the islands I visited to be quite laid back and not too overrun with tourists. There are plenty of quiet, secluded spots. Good to know. And how were the accommodations? Were you able to find a nice, affordable place to stay? Yes, absolutely. I stayed at this adorable little beachfront resort that was really reasonably priced. The rooms were comfortable and the staff was so friendly. That's exactly what I'm looking for then. Affordable luxury with a local, authentic feel. I'll have to look into the Bahamas more seriously. I highly recommend it. And if you need any other tips or recommendations, just let me know. I'd be happy to share more about my trip. Awesome, thanks Anna. I really appreciate you taking the time to tell me about your experience. It's given me a lot to think about. Of course. I know how daunting planning a big trip can be, so I'm always happy to lend a helping hand. Let me know what else you need. Will do. All right, I'm off to start researching Bahamas vacations. Enjoy the rest of your day. Lesson 4, Climate Change Concerns Hey Anna, have you been following the news about the extreme weather events happening around the world lately? Absolutely, it's been really concerning to see the levels of flooding, droughts, and heat waves getting more severe. The impacts of climate change are becoming impossible to ignore. I know, it's alarming. Scientists have been warning us for years, but it feels like things are escalating faster than anyone expected. Definitely. Just in the past few months, we've seen record-breaking temperatures, devastating wildfires, and whole communities being displaced by flooding. It's so frustrating. We've known about the dangers of climate change for decades, but governments and industries have been so slow to take meaningful action. I agree, it's incredibly disappointing. And the worst part is that the people who are suffering the most are those who contributed the least to the problem. Exactly. The communities that are already vulnerable are bearing the brunt of these disasters. It just doesn't seem fair. No, it's not fair at all. We have a moral obligation to do something about this before it's too late. 
but I'm worried that we've already reached a tipping point. I share your concerns. It can all feel so overwhelming and hopeless at times. But we have to keep fighting for change, even if the odds seem stacked against us. You're absolutely right. We have to stay positive and keep pushing for real solutions, whether that's transitioning to renewable energy, protecting forests, or holding big polluters accountable. Definitely. Every little bit helps, and if we all do our part, we can make a real difference. I'm committed to doing whatever I can to combat climate change. Lesson 5, Fitness Routine Revamp Morning Anna, have you been keeping up with your fitness routine lately? You know it, John. I try to go to the gym at least four times a week. Consistency is key, as they say. That's great to hear. I've been meaning to get back into a more regular workout schedule myself. Any tips for staying motivated? Definitely. For me, it really helps to have a mix of activities. I love trying out new classes like spin, yoga, and hit. Keeps things interesting, you know? That's a smart approach. I tend to get bored with the same old routine. Maybe I'll look into some group fitness options in my area. Absolutely, that's a great idea. The social element can make a big difference. Plus, the accountability from an instructor and classmates is super motivating. Hmm, you make a good point. I do better when I have someone to answer to rather than just working out on my own. Totally. And you know what else helps me stay motivated? Tracking my progress, whether it's through an app or just recording my workouts in a journal. Ah, that's a clever strategy. I've tried fitness trackers before but never really stuck with them. Maybe I need to give that another shot. It's all about finding what works best for you. The key is making it enjoyable, so you look forward to your workouts instead of dreading them. You're right, it should be something I actually enjoy, not just a chore. I'll have to experiment and see what fitness activities get me excited. Exactly. And don't be afraid to switch things up. Our bodies and minds need variety to stay engaged and motivated. Excellent advice, Anna. I'm feeling inspired to revamp my fitness routine and make it a sustainable part of my lifestyle. Lesson 6, Writing Inspiration. Hey Anna, I've been meaning to ask, what do you usually write about? Oh, I love writing on all sorts of topics. I find inspiration everywhere, from current events to personal experiences. That's really cool. I've been wanting to get into writing more, but I sometimes struggle with coming up with ideas. I totally understand. Writer's block can be a real challenge. But there are so many ways to spark creativity. Yeah? Like what kind of techniques do you use to come up with new writing ideas? Well, one thing that really helps me is just observing the world around me. I people watch at the park or cafe and imagine the stories behind what I see. 
Ah, that's a great idea. I never thought to use my surroundings as inspiration like that. Exactly. And don't be afraid to draw from your own life experiences too. Your unique perspective is valuable. Hmm, that's a good point. I have plenty of stories and anecdotes I could potentially turn into writing. Definitely. And if you're really stuck, try prompts or writing exercises. There are so many fun, creative ones out there. That sounds like a good idea. Any particular prompts or exercises you'd recommend for a beginner writer like myself? Ooh, there are so many great ones. How about trying a free write where you just write nonstop for a set time without stopping? Whoa, that sounds intense but also really freeing. I can see how that could help get the creative juices flowing. Totally. And another fun one is to pick a random object and write a short story or poem about it. Gets you thinking outside the box. I like that a lot. Taking an ordinary thing and finding the extraordinary in it. I'm definitely going to give some of these a try. Wonderful. I'm excited for you to explore the joys of writing. It's such a rewarding creative outlet. Me too, Anna. Thanks for all the awesome tips, I feel way more inspired to put pen to paper now. Lesson 7, Musical Passions Morning, Anna. Say, I heard you mention you play the guitar. Is that one of your hobbies? Absolutely. I've been playing for years and absolutely love it. Music is such a big part of my life. Oh. That's really interesting. I've always wanted to learn an instrument but never got around to it. What do you enjoy most about playing the guitar? There's just something so satisfying about being able to pick up a guitar and create music. The feel of the strings, the chords, the melodies, it's all so fulfilling. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I can imagine it's super rewarding to be able to play an instrument and express yourself that way. Definitely. And the great thing is, it's never too late to start learning. Even as an adult beginner, you can pick up guitar playing pretty quickly. Oh really? That's good to know. I always thought it would be too hard to learn as an adult, but you're saying it's doable? Absolutely. With the right resources and a little dedication, anyone can learn to play guitar. It's such a versatile and accessible instrument. Hmm, you've got me really intrigued now. What would you recommend for someone like me who's never played before but wants to give it a try? Well, the first step is to get a decent beginner's guitar. Nothing too fancy at first. Then I'd suggest finding some online tutorials or joining a local class. Ooh, that's a great idea. I bet there are tons of great guitar lesson videos on YouTube and stuff these days. Exactly. And don't be afraid to start slow and focus on the basics. Things like chord shapes, strumming patterns, and simple songs. That makes a lot of sense. 
Build that foundation first before trying to become a virtuoso or anything. Exactly. Rome wasn't built in a day. Just be patient with yourself and enjoy the process. The sense of accomplishment is so rewarding. You know, I'm really feeling inspired to give this a shot now. Thanks so much for the encouragement and helpful tips, Anna. I'm so glad I could help. Let me know if you ever want to swap guitar playing tips or jam out together. Will do, for sure. This has definitely piqued my interest in picking up a guitar. Appreciate you taking the time to chat about it. Lesson 8, Picnic in the Park Hey Anna, I've got an idea, how about we go on a picnic in the park this weekend? That sounds great. I love spending time outdoors. Shall we pack a basket with some sandwiches and fruit? Definitely, that's exactly what I was thinking. We could get some fresh air and enjoy a nice relaxing meal in the sunshine. Absolutely. I'll make sure to pack some of my favorite snacks. Do you have a particular spot in the park in mind? Hmm, there's this really nice grassy area near the pond that's usually pretty quiet and peaceful. We could set up there. Oh, that sounds perfect. I love watching the ducks swim around. It'll be so serene. Yeah, exactly. And we can just sit back, relax, and enjoy each other's company. Maybe even bring a book or two. Ooh yes, that sounds lovely. A little outdoor reading session would be wonderful. I'll make sure to pack a few of my favorites. Sounds like a plan then. I'm really looking forward to it. It's been a while since I've had a proper picnic. Same here. It'll be a nice change of pace from our usual indoor activities. A little vitamin D and fresh air will do us good. Couldn't agree more. All right, well I'll let you handle the food prep and I'll make sure we've got a nice cozy spot picked out. Sounds good. I'll pack us a delightful spread. This is going to be a fantastic afternoon. I'm already excited. Okay, let's plan to meet up at the park around 1 p.m., does that work for you? Lesson 9, Grocery Shopping Discipline All right, Anna, we need to go grocery shopping this weekend. Any tips on sticking to our list and avoiding unnecessary browsing? Ooh, good point John. It's so easy to get distracted in the store and end up with a cart full of impulse buys. Exactly. I always seem to wander off and come back with way more than I plan to get. Same here. Okay, here's what we should do, make a detailed grocery list beforehand and stick to it religiously. Sounds good. And let's make sure to eat a snack before we go so we're not shopping on an empty stomach. Yes, brilliant idea. That'll help prevent those tempting impulse purchases when we're hungry. Definitely. And let's also try to avoid browsing the aisles we don't need things from. Just go straight to the items on our list. 
Absolutely. No lingering or wandering in and out, that's the goal. Laser focus on the necessities. Yep, gotta keep our eyes on the prize. Oh, and maybe we can even split the list so we can cover more ground efficiently. Ooh yes, great thinking. You take one half, I'll take the other. That'll keep us moving quickly. Perfect. All right, let's make our list tonight so we're all ready to tackle the grocery store this weekend. Sounds like a plan. I'm feeling more disciplined already. This is going to be a smooth, budget-friendly trip. I sure hope so. No more wandering aimlessly down every aisle, that's for sure. We've got a mission. Lesson 10, Middle Child Musings. Hey Anna, can I share something with you? I've been thinking a lot about being the middle child lately. Ooh, interesting. I don't have any siblings, so I'd love to hear your perspective on that. Well, I feel like it's a unique experience. I can relate to both my older sister and my younger brother in different ways. That's really cool. What do you find most rewarding about being the middle child? I'd say it's the ability to kind of float between the two extremes. I get the best of both worlds, in a way. Ah uh, yes, I can see how that would be nice. You get to learn from your older sibling, but also have that special bond with the younger one. Exactly. And I feel like I sometimes get to be the peacekeeper between them when they butt heads. Ah, the middle child mediator. That must come in handy. It does. Though admittedly, I also get teased by them sometimes for being the forgotten middle child. Ah, I'm sorry to hear that. But I bet you find ways to make your voice heard and get the attention you deserve. Haha, ha, you know it. I've got my tricks. Plus, I think being overlooked a bit has made me a bit more independent. Well hey, that's a real positive then. You've developed your own identity and confidence. Definitely. I wouldn't trade my middle child status for anything. It's made me who I am. That's a really great outlook, John. I admire your appreciation for your unique position in the family. Thanks Anna. It's taken some time, but I've really grown to embrace the perks of being the middle child. I'm glad to hear that. It sounds like a pretty special experience, all things considered. It really is. I wouldn't change it for the world. Being the middle child has its challenges, but also a lot of upsides. Well said. Thanks for sharing that insight into your family dynamic, it was really fascinating to learn about. Anytime. I always enjoy talking about my middle child adventures. It's a part of me that I'm proud of. Lesson 11, Presentation Perfection. Morning Anna, can I pick your brain about something? Absolutely, what's up? 
I've got an important presentation coming up at work, and I want to make sure I nail it. What do you think are the keys to a successful presentation? Ooh, organization? Great question. Huh? What I'd do say you mean organization by organization and engagement are crucial. Well, you want a clear, logical flow to your presentation. Don't just jump around randomly. Right, that makes sense. And engagement, how do you recommend keeping the audience engaged? Visual aids are huge. Don't just read off slides, use them to supplement your points. Ah, good tip. I'll make sure my slides are visually interesting, not just text heavy. Exactly. And don't be afraid to get the audience involved too. Ask questions, do interactive activities. Ah, I like that idea. Get them participating rather than just passively listening. Definitely. It makes the whole thing feel more dynamic and keeps people's attention. That's great advice. Anything else I should keep in mind for presentation success? Hmm, one more thing, practice, practice, practice. Know your material inside and out. Right, I was planning on doing a ton of rehearsals. Muscle memory is key, huh? Absolutely. That way you can focus on your delivery and engagement, not just remembering the content. Awesome, this is super helpful. I feel much more prepared now. Thanks, Anna. Of course. Let me know how the presentation goes. I'm sure you're going to do great. Will do. Appreciate you taking the time to share your expertise. Lesson 13, Tantalizing Tom Yum. Hey Anna, have you ever tried traditional Tom Yum soup before? Traditional Tom Yum? No, I don't think I have. What's it like? Oh man, it's delicious. The perfect balance of spicy, sour, and savory flavors. You have to try it. Hmm, spicy and sour, huh? That sounds right up my alley. Where's the best place to get it around here? There's this amazing Thai restaurant downtown that makes it to perfection. The broth is so rich and fragrant. Ooh, that sounds amazing. What else goes into a traditional tom yum soup? Well, the base is this really flavorful lemongrass and galangal broth. Then they add in things like shrimp, mushrooms, tomatoes, lime juice, fish sauce. Wow, so many bold flavors. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Right? And the best part is, it's not too heavy. It's the perfect light, refreshing meal. Okay, you've officially sold me. We have to go try this place soon. When are you free? How about this weekend? I'm dying to introduce you to the magic of Tom Yum. Sounds good to me. I can practically taste it already. This is going to be amazing. Trust me, you're going to love it. Tom Yum is seriously one of my favorite Thai dishes. 
well I can't wait to see what all the hype is about. This is going to be a culinary adventure. That's Lesson the spirit. 14, Accent Adventures. Get ready for your taste buds to be blown away. Yo Anna, did you hear about that guy who grew up in Germany but has spoken with an American accent his whole life? No way, really? That's so bizarre. How does that even happen? I know, right? Apparently he was born in the States, but his family moved to Germany when he was young. Huh, that's wild. You'd think after living there for so long, he'd pick up the local accent. Exactly. But nope, he's had this full-blown American twang the entire time. That's just too funny. Do they know why he never picked up the German accent? Not entirely sure, but I heard it might have something to do with the way his family spoke at home. Even though they were in Germany, they kept using English. Ah, uh, I see, that makes sense then. The home environment overrode the outside influence. Definitely. And get this, he's actually way more comfortable speaking German than English. No way, that's so backwards. You'd think it would be the other way around. I know, it's crazy. But he said he just never felt a real connection to the American accent, even though it's the one he's used his whole life. That is so fascinating. I wonder if there are any other cases like that out there. Probably. Accents and language acquisition can be really unpredictable sometimes. You're telling me. This guy's story is just wild. I'd love to meet him and hear him speak. Same here. It would be such a trip to listen to him switch between the two. Haha <laughs> yeah, I bet it would be pretty comical. Definitely a unique linguistic quirk. For sure. Accents are endlessly interesting to me. There's always something new to learn. Lesson 15, Travel Adventures Hey Anna, have you seen those rave reviews for that new restaurant downtown? No, I haven't. What have you heard about it? Well, apparently it's this really authentic Peruvian place with amazing food. The reviews are off the charts. Oh wow, that sounds right up my alley. I love Peruvian cuisine. Same here. We should definitely check it out sometime soon. Definitely. I've been craving some good ceviche and chicha morada. Ooh, chicha morada, that's the purple corn drink, right? Yup, that's the one. So refreshing and flavorful. Nice, I can't wait to try it. Have you ever been to Peru before? No, but it's been on my travel bucket list for ages. The history and culture there are just fascinating. Oh for sure. From Machu Picchu to the Nazca Lines, there's so much to explore. Exactly. And the food is a huge draw too. 
I've heard it's one of the best cuisines in the world. Absolutely. Peru is definitely high on my list of places to visit soon. Same here. We should start planning a trip. I bet we could find some amazing deals. Good idea. Reading reviews and doing some research will help us make the most of it. Definitely. Can't wait to immerse ourselves in the Peruvian experience. Me neither. It's gonna be an incredible adventure, that's for sure. Lesson 16, Peruvian Pursuits. Morning Anna, have you looked into that Peruvian trip we were talking about? Yes, I have. And I'm so excited, the more I read, the more I want to go. Awesome, same here. The history and culture there just seem so rich and fascinating. Definitely. From Machu Picchu to the Nazca Lines, there's just so much to explore. Absolutely. And the food is a huge draw too. I've heard it's one of the best cuisines in the world. Oh, I know. I can't wait to try all the authentic Peruvian dishes. Ceviche, chichamorada, you name it. Uchicha Morada, that's the purple corn drink, right? I'm really looking forward to that. Yes, exactly. It's supposed to be so refreshing and flavorful. I bet it'll pair perfectly with the food. Definitely. We're going to have an incredible time exploring Peru's rich history and beauty. Absolutely, I can't wait. Reading all these reviews has me even more pumped for the trip. Same here. I think doing our research beforehand will really help us make the most of it. Totally. The more we know going in, the better we can plan out our itinerary. Exactly. This is going to be an adventure for the books, I can just feel it. I agree, it's going to be amazing. I'm so glad we decided to take this trip. Me too, it's gonna be the trip of a lifetime. I can't wait to experience Peru with you. Lesson 17, Quiet Reflections Hey Anna, did you notice how quiet Tom was at the party last night? It seemed a bit out of character for him. You know, I did notice that. Tom is usually the life of the party, so his subdued behavior was a bit surprising. I wonder what might have been on his mind. Same here. I mean, he's normally so outgoing and energetic. Do you think something might be bothering him? It's possible. Sometimes people put on a happy face in public, but are dealing with things privately. Maybe he was just having an off night, or something on his mind. That's a good point. We shouldn't assume anything without knowing the full story. Everyone has their ups and downs, even the most extroverted people. Exactly. It's easy to judge someone's mood or situation from the outside, but we really don't know what's going on in their personal life. Definitely. I think the best thing is to just check in with Tom, see if he's doing okay. 
As his friend, I want to make sure he's all right. That's very thoughtful of you, John. Reaching out with compassion is often the best way to support someone who may be going through something. I'm sure he'll appreciate your concern. Thanks, Anna. I'll give him a call later and see if he wants to grab coffee or something. Sometimes just having someone to talk to can make a big difference. Lesson 18, Nostalgic Memories Hey Anna, I was just thinking about our childhoods the other day. Don't you wish you had a better memory to recall all those special moments? Definitely. There are so many little details from when we were kids that I wish I could remember more clearly. The carefree days of playing outside for hours on end. Exactly. Like the time we built that crazy fort in your backyard. It looked so impressive to us back then, but I bet if we saw it now, it would be a total mess. Haha, <laughs> yeah. And remember how we used to have those epic water balloon fights in the summer? I can picture it so vividly, but I'm sure a lot of the specifics have faded. Oh man, those were the best. The sound of the balloons popping, trying to dodge the cold splashes. Simpler times, for sure. Absolutely. I wish I could go back and relive some of those childhood moments, even just for a day. The memories are so precious, but they can be so fleeting. I know what you mean. If only we could bottle memories the way we do photos. Then we could revisit them any time we wanted to. That would be amazing. Just close your eyes and be transported back to those carefree, joyful moments. Ah, the power of nostalgia. Haha, uh -huh, yeah. I guess we'll just have to make new memories now and hope we can hold on to them a little better this time around. Lesson 19, Avoiding Travel Delays Say, Anna, have you been keeping up with all the travel chaos lately? I'm really hoping I don't have to deal with any long delays this summer. Ugh, tell me about it. The news has been filled with horror stories of people getting stranded at airports for hours on end. I can't imagine how frustrating that must be. Seriously. I had a friend who got stuck at the gate for like six hours last month because of a mechanical issue. That's just the kind of thing I want to avoid at all costs. Yikes, that sounds awful. I bet they were climbing the walls by the end of it. Any tips for steering clear of those kinds of travel nightmares? Well, I've been doing some research, and it seems like booking early, packing light, and choosing off-peak flights can really help minimize the risk. Good call. And I've heard that downloading the airlines app and signing up for flight alerts is a smart move too. That way you can stay on top of any changes or delays. Absolutely. And I'm definitely going to give myself plenty of extra time to get through security and to the gate. No more cutting it close for me. Definitely a wise choice. The last thing you want is to be rushing around, stressed out, when your flight is about to take off. Exactly. I'm determined to have a nice, smooth travel experience this summer. No more horror stories for me, thank you very much. I hear you. 
Here's to uneventful flights and on-time arrivals all around. Fingers crossed, we both manage to avoid any travel headaches. Amen to that. I'll be sure to keep you posted on how it goes. Maybe we can compare notes afterwards and share our best tips. Lesson 20, Mastering Responsive Communication Hey Anna, have you been working on improving your communication skills lately? I've been trying to give more accurate and timely responses, but it's not always easy. You're right, it can definitely be a challenge. I find that staying focused and actively listening are key for me. How have you been working on that? Well, I've been trying to slow down a bit and really think through my responses before jumping in. I find that pausing for a moment helps me gather my thoughts. That's a great strategy. And I've also found that asking clarifying questions can be super helpful. It makes sure I understand the full context before responding. Absolutely. Asking questions is such an underrated communication skill. It shows you're engaged and genuinely want to grasp the other person's perspective. Definitely. And on the flip side, I've been trying to be more concise in my own responses. I have a tendency to ramble sometimes, you know? I hear you. It's all about finding that balance between being thorough and not overwhelming the other person. Practice makes perfect, right? Definitely. And I've noticed that making eye contact and using open body language can really improve the flow of a conversation too. Good point. All those nonverbal cues make a big difference in how the other person perceives your level of interest and attentiveness. Exactly. It's like, you can say all the right words, but if your body language isn't matching up, the message just doesn't land the same way. Totally. I'm making a conscious effort to be more mindful of that. It's amazing how much a simple nod or smile can do to keep a dialogue moving smoothly. Couldn't agree more. Well, I'm glad we got the chance to talk through some of these communication tips. It's always helpful to compare notes and learn from each other. Definitely. I feel like I've picked up some really valuable insights from this conversation. Thanks for taking the time to chat, Anna. Lesson 21, Mastering Everyday English Yo Anna, I've been trying to pick up some new casual English phrases lately. You know, the kind of stuff I could just casually drop into conversation, no problem. Oh really? What kind of everyday English are you looking to learn? I'd be happy to share some simple but useful expressions. Well, I feel like I have the basics down, you know? But I want to sound more natural, like I'm not just reciting textbook phrases. I hear you. Sometimes, it's the little casual idioms and slang that make all the difference in conversational English. Exactly. Like, I could say this is easy a hundred times, but that's not nearly as fun as being able to say this is a piece of cake. Haha, <laughs> good example. Those kinds of idiomatic expressions can add so much personality to your English. Totally.
and I want to be able to give advice in a more natural way, you know? Not just a dry you should do this. Right, right. Something more like, hey, let me give you a pro tip on that, or listen, here's the deal with that. Yes. See, you get it. Those little nuances make all the difference in sounding like a native speaker. Absolutely. The key is finding those common, conversational phrases that add flavor to your language. Exactly. And I figure the best way to learn them is just to keep practicing with native speakers like yourself. Well, you've come to the right place then. I'm happy to keep helping you expand your everyday English toolkit. Awesome, I really appreciate it. All right, hit me with some more juicy slang and idioms, will ya? You got it. Hmm, how about that's a no-brainer or it's a done deal? Those are good ones to have in your back pocket. Ooh, I like those. All right, I'm gonna be busting those out left and right. Thanks for the lesson, Anna. Lesson 22, City Life versus Country Living. Yo Anna, can I get your take on something? What do you think is better, living in the city or out in the countryside? Hmm, that's an interesting question. I can definitely see the pros and cons of both. What's your perspective on it? Well, I grew up in a small town, so I'm kind of used to the quiet, slower pace of country life. But lately I've been thinking about moving to the city. I can understand the appeal of both. The countryside has that nice, peaceful vibe. But the city offers so much in terms of culture, entertainment, and convenience. Exactly. Like, the country is great and all, but sometimes I feel like I'm missing out on all the action in the city, you know? I hear you. The city has so much to explore, museums, restaurants, concerts, shopping. It's always buzzing with energy. Yeah, and I feel like there are more opportunities in the city too, career-wise and just in general. That's a good point. The job market and networking possibilities are often better in urban areas. MHM, and the cultural exposure is huge. You get to rub elbows with all kinds of people from different backgrounds. Definitely. The diversity in a city can be really eye-opening. Expand your horizons in so many ways. Totally. But then again, the country has its own charm. The fresh air, the wide open spaces, the slower pace of life. Absolutely. There's something to be said for that more relaxed, peaceful lifestyle. It can be really rejuvenating. Yeah, you got that right. Decisions, decisions. Hmm. Maybe I'll just have to try out both and see which one suits me better. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Spend some time in the city, then balance it out with trips to the countryside. See what feels right. Yeah, yeah, that's a good plan. All right, I think you've given me a lot to think about here. Appreciate the input.
Lesson 23, Party Planning Pros and Cons Hey Anna, I need your help planning this party I'm throwing. What do you think, is it better to get party supplies online or go in person to the stores? Ooh, a party, how exciting. Well, there are pros and cons to both options. What are your thoughts on it? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Online shopping is so convenient, but I'm not sure if I'm missing out on anything by not going to the stores. That's a good point. The convenience of online shopping can be really nice, especially for busy party planning. But there are some benefits to the in-person experience. Exactly. Like, online I can easily compare prices and read reviews. But in the stores, I can see the products in person and get a better feel for them. Totally. And you can get hands-on with the decorations and stuff, which can help visualize how they'll look at the party. MHM and the store employees might have some good recommendations and party planning tips that I can't find online. Oh yes, that local expertise could be super helpful. They probably know all the trending party themes and decorations. Definitely. And then there's the whole social aspect of going out and shopping. It can be more fun than just clicking away on a computer. Good call. The in-person experience can make the party planning process more enjoyable. A little retail therapy never hurt anyone. Ah, true that. But then again, online shopping is just so darn convenient. I don't have to leave the house or deal with crowds. Also a really good point. The ease and efficiency of online shopping is hard to beat, especially when you're juggling a million party tasks. Exactly. And I can do it all from my couch in my pajamas. Plus, the packages just show up at my door. Haha <laughs> yes, the pajama perk is key. And no lugging heavy supplies back from the store. Online shopping has its perks for sure. Totally. Hmm, I think I'm leaning more towards doing a mix of both. Get some essentials online, then hit up the local party stores for the fun stuff. Ooh, that sounds like a solid plan. Best of both worlds. You get the convenience, plus the hands-on experience. Yeah, exactly. I think that'll help me cover all my bases and throw an awesome party. Thanks for the input, Anna.